here we are. We're here today to talk about customer service. It's something we all got to do and we all should know more about. So today I'm trying a couple of different things out with a webcam. So please bear with me because this is something new for me. But I am always trying to add to the arsenal of things that I do with the things that I do. It's good to experiment and it's good to learn more and do more. Plus, I'll be able to make the videos a little bit more dynamic, and that in part is customer service. You see, customer service is all about the experience your customer has, and I didn't want to be stale or stagnant, and I wanted to be trying new things. That's just a part of my philosophy in customer service. Even in my art, I'm known for that, and part of what my customers like to see is all the ways I experiment and get creative and try new things out rather fearlessly, I might add. So bear with me as we talk about customer service. I'm gonna take you to a place. I'm gonna take you to a mattress store. And for a minute, I'm gonna ask you to consider a couple of different things. You walk into the mattress store, the first mattress store, because you're gonna do some comparative shopping. And they're one of the hassle-free, not to use a brand name or anything, types of places. You walk in and you're completely 100% on your own. Nobody's there to help you. You just have to figure it all out yourself. Now, some might say the lack of hassle is the customer service. And for some people that might work really rather well. You go to store number two because see, you were a little bit confused, okay? You had questions and you couldn't get answers. So you go to store number two and you are immediately inundated with all of the salesmen who are giving you the pitches and telling you the prices and you're being inundated. It's just too much information and too much going on. So you really leave with none of your questions answered. <clears throat> you know lots of different prices, but you're confused and you end up having this odd feeling of they're just trying to sell you what they're gonna make the most money on. And you go then to the third place. And by this time, you're a little bit fatigued and you're a little bit worn out and, and really you just want a new bed, okay? So you go to the third place and it's the three bears, uh, the little bear things of just right. You know, not too warm, not too hot, just right. And what happens is, is you have somebody who's willing to take the time to listen to you, to answer your questions, and to give you answers that are not based on their own needs. Now I would ask you, which place would you prefer to go? Think about that for a minute because for everybody, it might just be a little bit different of an answer. And I know for some of you, and maybe even all of you, you think, no, it's obvious. Me, I do the research beforehand. I don't want anybody coming up to me. I already have my decision made. So the hassle-free way is nice. On the other hand, for other people, they do have questions and they don't want to be hounded. This is a very personal set of decisions we make all the time when we're purchasing things. So now pretend you're that same customer and instead of buying a mattress, you're buying a piece of artwork. How does that work for you? How do you want to be treated when you walk in the door? Do you want to be able to make up your own mind and your own way about what pieces to add to your home? Do you want to know more about the artwork? Do you want to know what's collectible? Think about all of the things that I've just encouraged you to think about. Customer service is an interesting thing. You see, I believe that true customer service is being able to treat people exactly as they need to be treated. And that means we have to look for some cues for some things for people. You know, if a person wants to be able to go into that art type environment and be able to just look around freely and do their thing, that's probably what they need. And when they do come to a point where they have questions, you need to be prepared for that. And the same goes for all of the other types of people that are out there. See, there's no one standard of customer service that is exactly correct. Each person will probably need to be treated a little bit differently. And each person will probably need to have answers different. You know, not every shoe fits every person and not every piece of artwork fits every person and certainly not every customer service style fits every person. 
I mean, we can adapt those things to the people who are our customers. We've become very powerful because we're not turning certain people off. We're not pushing others away with no answers, and yet we're accessible. And that's a term you hear me use all the time. You have to be accessible. But part of that is meeting people on their level, how they operate. And so gaining some interpersonal skills and just observing how, how people work can be very empowering to your art career. Think about it like this. If you walk up to a person and simply ask the question or make the statement, hey, I'm the artist, I'm here, let me know if you need anything. I don't want to invade on your space while you're looking, but I'm here and I'm available. Just let me know. One of a couple things is going to happen. They're going to say, yep, that's cool, good, great, I'll let you know. They're going to say, I'm really wondering about such and such. Or they're going to say, yeah, I'll let you know, but wait, there's another question. It's interesting when you make yourself accessible to people, how quickly you can become really aware of what their needs are, but you have to be open to the idea. And you know, we also can't get on our artist kick. Like when you're asked the question, well, how long did this take you to make? I'm gonna tell you right now, good customer service is not answering the question by saying a lifetime, actually, some people really want to know. Like time-wise, you had this piece in front of you. How long did it take? And it's not because they devalue you. It's because maybe they're a little bit amazed and think that looks so complicated. How could you do that just like that? And these are the things that we have to be able to answer without taking it as a shot at the artist. Maybe they want to know where the idea came from. Who knows what they'll want to know? but it's really okay. They can want to know whatever they want about the art because they're looking for that sneak peek into who we are as an artist and how we do things. So that's being accessible and that's customer service. And there's always another reason to have good customer service. It's commission jobs. Again, one of the reasons people don't buy art today is because it's not the right color scheme. So customer service and being accessible means, yeah, I could probably make something in the color scheme you like. Is it kind of like this or like that? And what is your process for that? I mean, if you're going to be the artist who just says, well, no, I don't create on demand, that is fine. Don't get me wrong. I know tons of people like that, and they do fabulous art. But I also know another group of artists who do like commissioned work. They view it as a challenge and getting them out of their box. And maybe every time they do some commissioned work, they learn a little bit more about their artistic style. Take me, for example. I absolutely dislike the color green. I put it in very little of my work until I had a customer who, or a client who really wanted a custom piece for a business, and lime green was their color, along with some other blues and, uh, you know, like greens. And, okay, let me see what I can do. To me... It was a challenge, and it ended up being very successful. They have a piece that represents their business in a very creative style that I put together for them. It was commissioned work that taught me a little bit something about their business, about the color green, and things that I could do to make customers happy. You know, commissioned work is fun to do because we all need to get out of our creative box. And I don't care who you are. You might say you don't have a box, but trust me, you all have a box. I know every artist has a box of some sort. We're always going to be getting stuck on certain styles or in certain ways. So let customer service help you get outside of that box. There's other ways that customer service can help you too. For example, one of the things I do is I absolutely allow for um, payment arrangements or payments over time on my work. I mean, let's face it. I want my art to be accessible and something that anybody can purchase, but not everybody can just drop the dime today. So I absolutely will allow for that. I will deliver it. I will ship it by whatever method you would prefer. These are the steps I'll go to to ensure that my customers or my followers are happy. And I also want to know that I've taken the extra step. I mean, recently I had somebody, a couple people actually, purchase prints of mine. And I could have just stopped right there, 
But I asked, would you like me to see about getting it framed and getting quotes for you? No big deal to me. My framer's just down the street. And guess what? Two out of three were thrilled at that. And it was no real big expenditure of my time. I didn't really do a whole lot extra here. I simply asked a question because this is what I know. Another little fun statistic for you. Prints have the most likely chance of ending up rolled up in a closet. Art that is not wall ready will almost never reach the art. Or I'm sorry, will never reach the wall. It'll reach the art because it is art, but it might not reach the wall. And that's because we haven't allowed for the easy button. There is a lot to be said for the easy button when it comes to people purchasing your work. You know, what can you do to help them? What are the options? These are things that they're looking to you to be the expert on and be the expert. For example, I know some of my work looks great mounted on gator board. It's always an option. Some of it is more suited to framing, always an option. And if they don't want me to do the work, I want to know that I can give them some recommendations on the places that I think might be able to do what they would like. It's 50-50. I'm not going to tell my clients, you must frame it and you must allow me to do the work on it. I'm going to offer the opportunity because I want to make sure that my work hits the wall. And I don't mean hits the wall in a violent way. I mean, I want people to be looking at it. It should be hanging. So think about what you want when you walk into buying a piece of artwork. Because here's the truth. If you can understand how clients' needs work because you can put yourself in their shoes for a minute, you will probably offer better customer service. You know, my followers know they can just shoot me a post on Facebook. They know they can send me a message. Hell, if they want to, I'll even look for smoke signals. Totally cool with that. Probably bring my camera too because some smoke signals can be really cool to photograph. My point today is to get you really thinking about the idea of what does customer service mean. I've talked to a number of um, art dealers and galleries, and one of their common complaints is artists can be really difficult to work with. And you know what? They're right. I've worked with some really difficult artists. That is not good customer service. Just because you're an artist doesn't give you the right to make demands and be a diva. You need to earn that. And why would you want to be that anyway? I mean, is that a trait you like in others? Because think about it. It's kind of a turnoff to most people. I want to be agreeable to whoever the client may be. And yes, a gallery is a client. In fact, most people you encounter, you should just treat them all like they are a potential client. And I don't mean that as in I am selling to everybody I meet. I mean, I want to treat people decently. I want to answer questions. I want to remove obstacles. I want to be accessible. And I want to be timely on things as well. For example, I absolutely deliver or ship the day I say I'm going to. And if anything is going to get in the way of that, I am communicating those things. Those are just good business skills. Communication, timeliness, delivering what you say you're going to deliver, and doing right by it. Why would you disrespect your art? You know, your art is this beautiful thing. Why would you disrespect it by giving it poor customer service and representing it poorly? You're not doing yourself any favors. And the fact is, is, when you are easier to work with and you are nicer and you do pay attention to things like providing that social media attention for places that show your work or, or have your work hanging, that is good customer service. And they'll probably want to work with you again. And you never know where those things can lead. Customer service is an absolute paramount to what you do with your work. Don't represent your art poorly because in the end you're doing it a huge injustice and that ought to be a crime in my book.